What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Bike Hub Japan. So the early bird catches the worm as they say and in the background there you can see the sun rising just above my city which is Nagoya in Japan. So recently I haven't been able to get back into my regular sleeping pattern after I got back from England and so I keep going to bed really early at like 9 30 10 o'clock and I keep waking up at half five in the morning so I decided today just to go for a ride and it was gorgeous having no traffic it was pretty cool. But today what I want to talk to you about is tires and how important they are for you or in this case for me so let's just have a quick look at the bike all right so this conversation sort of came into my head because when i went to ride the bike with andy aka tokyo rider the other day in the mountains he said to me i've never met anyone who can just jump onto any old bike for the first time without even looking at the tires without even checking the tire pressures and ride as hard as you do and he got me thinking yeah, he's right. I can never find the limit of tires. To me, like any old tire is good enough. I've never felt the need to have, you know, some super duper semi-slick track day tire on the road. And I just want to talk to you guys about why. So I definitely want you guys to comment. Um, but first, just let me show you the date stamp on my tires. So hopefully we'll be able to get this on camera. It's a bit sunny here, but... So can you see that? It says 02... Let me put my head in the shade. 0214 so the first two digits is the week and the second two digits is the year so this the second week of the year would be january so these tires were made in january 2014. now they are not super duper tires they're pirelli pilot threes which is sort of meant to be 85 percent road use and 15 percent track use so they're a dual compound you can sort of see there where the, the different compounds come in. So the middle is hard, so it doesn't wear so bad on uh, long highway journeys and stuff. And the edge is the stickier rubber. So you can see there my um, chicken strips, as people like to call them, which I think is a dumb thing. Don't worry about your chicken strips, who cares? But that's how much tire I'm using anyway. So I've got, you know, like maybe a few, two, two, three, cent two centimeters maybe um, before I'm actually on the edge of the tire. If I come around to the front, front's a different story. I'm not using, I'm using maybe a whole thumb width there that could still be used. And there's not a whole bunch of tread left on them, but basically these tires are from 2014. So they're old as hell, they're eight year old tires. And I had a few slips on them on the road the other day, but it was nothing particularly scary. And so I just started wondering to myself, well, first thing I was, I'm gonna buy some super sticky tires. And then I just thought to myself, do I really need super sticky tires? So let's just jump on the bike, go for a ride and have a chat. All right guys, so back on the bike and uh, yeah, let's start this conversation off. So. Um, to go back to what Tokyo Rider said to me, uh, I can ride any old piece of shit bike on any old piece of shit tyres and still be able to keep up with reasonable riders. And despite him thinking that was going to inflate my ego and make me think I'm some kind of fucking Superman, it, it didn't do that. What it did do to me was actually make me think like, hmm, he's got a point there. Like, to me, I've never had or felt the need to go out and buy the best super duper track day tire uh, that money can buy to get those extra tenths of a second on the road. It's just not something that, you know, occurs to me. Um, I've only ever had one bike that had like super awesome tires on it and it, it didn't make a difference to my riding because I was never pushing the bike that much. Uh, I was never pushing the bike beyond my limits or the tire the bike itself limits so that the tires would be like the factor that would save me or get me a better timer or something it just it's just not that important to me now why i, I and then w when he said that to me you know like i can ride any old piece of shit it, it just got me thinking like why is that is that because i'm not a good enough rider or is it because i'm uh, despite what it looks like in my videos because I'm a, a safer rider um, is it because I'm smooth with my throttle inputs and stuff and I don't upset the tire enough that that 
extra 10% of grip is going to save me or help me. I just don't know what it is. Now, when I had my SV650, that also didn't have decent tyres on it. It had pretty normal tyres. Um, and it was a very softly sprung bike, which I liked. I liked the way the bike moved around underneath me and it felt more involving. Now, if I'd have gone and put super duper tires on that, I instantly would have felt that, oh my God, this suspension on this bike sucks ass. But because I just stuck with the old um, sports touring tires, it was sort of like a good, a good mix, a good balance. Now this bike obviously has got an Erlins rear shock. Um, it's got fully adjustable forks that I can play with until my heart's content. So with this particular bike, maybe a super sticky sports tire would, would be more, you know, it might suit the bike because if I'm riding really hard on the um, sports touring tires, then the suspension is going to be better than the tires are. So when you've got a bike with, with good suspension, maybe good tires is the way to go. Um, but yeah, I just want to know what you guys think about this. So get, get active in the comment section and I will reply to each and every one of you. Um, now I realize that on my channel, I've got a lot of different uh, riders. We've got a lot of Harley people on here. Uh, a lot of people with, you know, like with, with touring bikes and a very small percent, I think, with actual um, sports bikes. So I am interested to know what you guys look for when you buy a tire. What is your pri priority? Um, for me, I would say my priority is going to be f uh, quick to warm up um, because a lot of the riding we do when we're on the twisties, we have like 10 minute breaks. Uh, we get to the top and we have a break. We ride back down again, we have a break. And so I would like a tyre that is quick to warm up so that I can get back straight onto the, the full throttle and the hooliganism straight away. But I know a lot of you guys, it might be longevity might be your number one concern. You know, like a, a lot of people who are doing massive highway journeys, a lot of you guys doing moto camping and stuff. Um, yeah, you might, for you, it might be better to have a tyre that does 10,000 miles. Now, my two, my two best riding mates, my two BFFs, uh, Adam and Andy. Now, uh, Andy's got an R1. Uh, he's constantly trying out new tyres. He's tried out some Metzlers. Recently, he's tried out some Metzlers. And then when they wore out, there was some other special tyre that he wanted to get, but he couldn't. So he got S22Rs. And he likes them for the first thousand kilometres. Then he says they're shit. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. And then Adam, he's got a GSX-R1000R. It's brand almost brand new bike i would guesstimate he's had that bike for less than six months and he's already on his third set of tires this week he just changed his tires so yeah i don't want to be having tires that i need to change three times a year that would just be too expensive um so yeah i, I want something that's got a good a good mix oh look a gsx thousand that might be adam's old bike Oh, it's a 750. It's not his bike. Um, yeah, so I want a tyre that warms up quickly, that offers good grip on the road. Well, no, excellent grip on the road and good grip on the track and is also capable of doing a decent amount of miles because uh, we ride to the mountains on regular roads and highways quite a lot. And then when we get to the, ho uh, to the mountain roads, we're on the side of the tyre constantly for 10 minutes at a time, then a break, then another 10 minutes at a time, stuff like that. So I want basically the best of both worlds without breaking the bank. But I also don't think that I need to have a Diablo Rosso Corsa V2 blah, 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 blah. I think just something one step up from a sports tourer is, is all I need. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. I'm maybe going to look at the Michelin GP, I think it's called, which is not the, the track focus one. It's more like 80% road, 20% track or something like that. So I think I'm going to be looking at that. Um, so yeah, like I said, get active in the comments section and let's have a chat about this and uh, let me know what you think. Is it really that important to have a super duper trick as fuck sports track MotoGP super bike tire when 80% of your riding is on the road and out of that 80% probably 
70% of it is riding to the fun road and the 10% is riding actually hard you know on the corners getting your knee down and that so I don't know what do you guys think and last point um, I know I said this before in my last video but I actually got the number wrong I said in my last video that only 40% of people who watch my videos are subscribers I was totally wrong it's actually 7.8% so all the people who are watching my videos only eight percent of you are actually subscribed so if you are enjoying this video if you do like my videos please do subscribe just hit the subscribe button it doesn't cost you any money it's not going to get taken off your credit card or anything like that it's 100 percent free so do me a do me a good one go ahead and smash the fuck out of that subscribe button and of course hit the notification bell all right, guys, I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye for now. Sayonara.